Okay, so today we're going to look at operating systems. Just as a quick starter activity, you've got four images. I'm going to pause and see if we can name the four operating systems that these images are associated with. So on the left hand side, we've got Linux. So Linux, if you've used Chromebooks or if you've used Raspberry Pis, for example, they're all built sort of on a Linux distribution. So these are uh, a sort of text-based operating systems. Um, and you, you may look into this in a little bit more detail in the future. The second one, uh, very familiar Microsoft Windows. The third, Android, so mobile phone uh, operating systems. And then on the very right hand side is the Google symbol, but particularly the Google Chrome OS, which again, as I mentioned, Chromebooks use that operating system. So specification content, so we're looking to look at the functionality of operating systems, so the user interface, memory management and intern multiple multitasking, peripheral management and drivers, user management and file management. So there's a range of uh, various sort of different things that we need to look at with regards to operating systems. I won't go through this entire slide, um, but if you want to pause, you're welcome to read that. So let's look at what operating systems are. So an operating system is uh, probably the most important piece of software that your computer has uh, on it. So operating systems quite often referred to as the OS um, are actually the piece of software that enables you to interact with the hardware of your computer. So the operating system is a very, very clever piece of software that uh, gives us as humans a way to interface with the hardware and the machinery that is actually physically existing in our computer. So it means that we can interact with the storage devices, the CPU and so forth as well. And this can do this in a number of different ways, but it also allows us to run additional applications um, and other pieces of software as well. Another feature of operating systems is peripheral management. Now, peripherals are effect effectively additional devices that you can plug into your computer. Now, whilst we might initially think of these as external devices, it's worth noting as well that the operating system, whilst it manages external devices, will also manage additional devices that you might uh, install into your computer. So if you were to, for example, upgrade the graphics card or some of your storage devices, the same kind of process happens. So peripheral management for the operating system is where it enables your computer to interact with additional pieces of hardware. So this is through communication and control. Um, and this might require some additional pieces of software called drivers. And it's the driver is a piece of software that enables your operating system to communicate with the additional piece of hardware that you've added to your computer. So one of the first types of user interfaces when we're considering operating systems is command line. So command line interfaces or CLI are text-based operating systems. These, generally speaking, have a very steep learning curve um, in that they become very, very more complex when using them for sort of more advanced features. Uh, and they, they do require a great level of accuracy. So spelling and so forth is very, very important. And I would generally sort of say that these are sort of expert operating systems. It's not the sort of thing that your sort of everyday computer user would perhaps use. They can be very powerful and, you know, useful for a number of sort of things, but generally speaking, this isn't the sort of thing that you would use on a typical computer. More typically, you'd use a graphical user interface. And the image that you've got on the screen is that of one of Windows, uh, Microsoft Windows, but there are sort of slight variations between them. And, and these follow sort of this WIMP, these windows, icons, menus, and pointers. And the design is kind of themed around sort of a really simple and easy to use interface where novice users can use this. They've got a low learning curve, so you don't necessarily have to be the most sort of computer literate. Um, and generally speaking, these are the easiest to use of the operating systems. Operating systems, as I mentioned, have a range of sort of features and a range of things that they do. And one of these things is memory management. And you'll have learned from earlier in the unit where we talked about the way that RAM interacts with the CPU and with the secondary storage device um, in order to make sure that data can be processed. So when we think about the operating system, it's the operating system's job to move data from your secondary storage into your RAM so that your CPU can access it directly and then can actually process those instructions. Equally, it's your operating system's responsibility to make sure that the uh, memory is managed appropriately, making use of virtual memory where needed, but equally allowing multiple applications to be loaded into RAM at the same time. So if you think back again when we were talking about RAM and how certain applications will take up certain amounts of storage, it's the operating system's job to manage that. So multitasking is uh, achieved through process of management. Now, process management is where your operating system will 
instruct your CPU to process um, tasks on your computer in a particular sequence or order. So rather than processing one task after the other, after the other, after the other sequentially, and having to wait for one task to finish. So in this graphic below, having to wait for task A to finish before it can start processing task B, and then waiting for task B to finish before task C and so forth. The processor will actually divide the tasks up and break them down and work on a bit by bit by bit um, in a view that that gives us the perception that we've got multiple things happening on our PC at the same time, when in fact, things are just getting processed um, sequentially but in smaller chunks so that we're not in a situation where we've got that bottleneck but it is a case that obviously still our CPU a singular core is only one on working on one task at any given time it's also the operating system's responsibility to look for, uh, or to manage the user's accounts so if you think about a Windows machine one that you may have at home you might have multiple user accounts in there and it might well be a case that different users will have different settings, be it, for example, different wallpapers, different themes, different colors, graphics. However, equally, they'll have their own data so that different information, different usernames and passwords stored on those web browsers. You might find they also have different access levels. So you might have some users which are administrators and some which are not. You might have access to different applications that are being stored on the computer. It might well be that some of them are password protected and some of them aren't. And there's lots and lots of different features that the operating system can help manage in order to enable uh, the computer system to be able to have multiple users. And file management. So file management is where the operating system takes care of a number of sort of housekeeping tasks. If we think of them like that, and there are quite a few. So things like creating folders. So creating folders, renaming your files, renaming your folders, copying files, moving files, equally with folders, those four sort of creating, renaming, copying, and moving. Notice that you can't create files from the operating system. It's from the applications that create the files, but in terms of renaming, copying, and moving. So it's that managing of those existing files rather than necessarily creation of the files. So just as a key point there, equally you can sort files by specific details and it's quite important here that we don't refer to this as organizing the files without actually qualifying what we're organizing it by. So try and stick with sorting the files. And as I said, I've given you a couple of examples there. So file names, it might be that you're sorting it alphabetically. You might sort it by file size or any other sort of the attributes associated with these files. And again, you can set file permissions and access rights. So it could be, for example, that you're removing access to anything to certain users that aren't administrators. You can view file details, looking at the different sort of metadata, if you recall um, from prior learning, looking at some of the key information about that particular file. And equally, your operating system will enable you to search for files within the storage devices.